Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing a reveal. It's not really an unbagging, it's an unboxing, but it's a reveal of the Bite the Bullet Your Legend series from Frederick Moyerson. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. It's by Double A Games. This is volume one and the expansion volume two. So this is kind of going in the, uh, the current trend of um, game books in that the game rules and the game components are all in a book. This one obviously dealing with the, the Western uh, era, the American West, which is a kind of, there's, there's not too many games for the American West. I mean, there's a few and it's coming, you know, there's more more coming out now, but it's not widely touched upon. It's some other games. And this is kind of a quasi miniatures game. You can play this with miniatures. You can play this with, I believe there's included tokens, uh, standees, etc. Whatever you want to play it with, you can play this game. So uh, we'll take a look at volume one and then we'll take a quick look at the expansion volume two. So these are Perfect Bound. Uh, these come from Amazon. I believe they're, they may be print on demand. Uh, I did not see anywhere else that you can get them, but you can get them in pretty much all of the uh, Amazon uh, country specific um, websites. Um, so just check your local Amazon and search for Bite the Bullet and you should find them both available. So anyway, this comes in at Oh, let's see. Well, this is actually, this one was made in the USA in Cobble, Texas. And it comes in at, well, this, this one comes in at 87 pages. Go into a quick start guide there. A few blank pages on the end. It is full color. I don't want to reveal too much because you obviously want to buy the book. So I'm going to keep it kind of, kind of close. Um, but it looks like it covers some pretty, pretty, uh, Extensive rules. Let's see. We got a table of contents here. There's game rules right there. So we've got it's got about eight pages of introduction. There's our contents. Um, starts about page nine, and the rules go through page thirty-seven. So we've got about inclusively. We've got about what uh, twenty-seven pages there, and then covering everything from well, solo or multiplayer. So there's some solo. Uh, AI included, I believe. Solo game example, your scenarios, character sheets, standees, it does have standees, counter sheets, campaign log, overview tables, and a quick start guide. Very cool. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So we got game design by Frederick Moyerson. Illustrations, the same guy. Layout, still one in the same. And then Charlotte handles the communications. Stephanie handles the marketing. And Alexander was the lead playtester. I think they might be related. All right, so let's kind of dig in here real quick. Like I said, I don't want to give too much away. So, um, and there's the designer right there. Here's Frederick. Hi, Frederick. How you doing, buddy? All right, so I saw him promoting these on Facebook and I had to ask him about it and find out where I could get them. So uh, that is, he's doing his own his own marketing. And he apparently is the designer of Saboteur, which is a cool game. Ninja, Nuns on the Run, Unsolved, uh, and a couple others here. Gouda Gouda. And Nick the Zufasen, Hide the Kids. I believe that one. So there we go. All right. So for for being the artist, he's he's pretty darn good at it. Some pretty nice little artwork here. I do like that. And we get to straight to the rules. So solo multiplayer. It's designed to play with one to four players in three game modes. Solo mode, you control one or two characters and have to face NPC opponents. So that's pretty cool. Do not underestimate them. While they sometimes act stupid and brainless, they can surprise you on other occasions. You will need all your tactical skill to defeat the NPC opponents. It's also great for with two players in co-op mode. You can also play competi competitive mode, uh, two to four players uh, or in teams. So good guys, bad guys, however you want to phrase it. There's eight scenarios in here. Um, there was a note here on how to use the book. Let's go, there we go. 
All right, so the most convenient way to play the game is to display the scenario map in front of you and lay out the two character sheets. So it does have it where the um, your tokens you know, for counters and everything, you're going to have to cut out. Here's your standees, and you cut them out and fold them. Um, so, and then character sheets for competitive mode, these are outlaws. We have Ron, Billy, Miguel, and Kathy. And then Lawman. Right, so then here's, like, here's an example map for the bank robbery scenario. So you're supposed to cut this page out, and fortunately he was smart enough to make it blank on the other side. So that's that was good thinking, and you can laminate it or do whatever. It does it does bring, and there's eight scenarios in this. I'm on scenario eight. I don't, like I said, I don't want to show everything, give everything away by book. Uh, the trend in these, though, uh, of, of here's your book, cut it up, and do it is, you know, it's a little disappointing. Uh, I would like to see these these publishers come up with a way to put the rules, scenarios, etc., in the book, and find a way to allow people to get the assets digitally. And then you can print them on cardstock because it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to scan this you know with a scanner and PDF and get the you know get it perfectly and you know you may not care I mean it's a fun little game you may not care that it's perfect but it would be nice to be able to print out your maps on cardstock or on uh, chipboard or however you want to how you choose to do it um, so that would be nice that's just something to think of in the future and it's not just a Frederick it's to to uh, to Worthington and everyone who's doing these these uh, these books uh, these game books uh, just you know people don't want to cut their book <laughs> you know uh, just you know you've been you've been trained I mean if you've been if you're as old as I am you've definitely been trained the books are your friends and you don't you don't mess with them you don't cut them up so uh, just something to think about um, in the future or so I don't know, or, or sell the scenarios, sell those that information even as a separate packet of loose, you know, of loose pages, so you can just make copies. I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not here to solve it. I'm just. I know that's that's the one frustrating thing about these is you gotta cut up my book. So, but I will because I want to play this, and so I you know I'll do something. So anyway, here's a solo gameplay example that we've given here. Let's see if we can find the beginning. All right, the initial situation is as follows. Ron is detected. Two other NPC opponents are still concealed. Oh, interesting. So you've got conceal markers and you've got revealed markers. I mean, they're obviously the, the standee is there when they're revealed, so that's pretty cool. And then you get the characters, their, their cards. Um, so you can get a look here. Uh, you probably cannot read that, I don't know because uh, it's a small graphic on the page, big graphic, but basically it says, you know, you roll a die and he shoots and runs away out of line of sight to the nearest cover, otherwise move closer to the target and shoot. So um, that's pretty neat that there's, there are AI, you know, bots, AI control characters. So anyway, so that's what you get. You got eight scenarios here. Uh, let's see what we've got. We've got... I can do it without giving everything away here. I'll pull it down here and you can see everything. So we've got a new sheriff in town, Rustlers of the Night, the Mine of Dry Gulch, the Whistle of the Train, scenario four. Oh, cool. We got a little train there on the tracks. That's pretty cool. And then an example for scenario four. And then we've got Escape from Jail. It's an outlaw mission. The Wrong Corral, also an outlaw mission. So you have to play the bad guys in some of these, I guess, if you want to play everything. You can also play campaign mode, I believe. Trapped in the Canyon. So there's some, some of the artwork. He's a good, good job on the artwork there, I think. And scenario eight is the bank robbery that we saw earlier. And so it's like there was Ron's sheet 
that I looked at before. There's the full size one, right? And I'm only showing you the one, you know, kind of not everything about it. But, uh, so you can see there's an action chart for the AI. So that's neat. So that is book one. That's volume one. And this is volume two of the expansion. And he's got different artwork. He's shooting down the boardwalk here. And now he's shooting out into the, out into the street. So let's take a look at that one. Pretty much the same thing. You do need both. I mean, excuse me, let me take this back. To use this, you need the base, base booklet. You don't have to get this. You can get this first and play and then, and then have this one on. But you do have to have this to play this. Which is, is pretty obvious since it's an expansion. So this one goes right in. This goes straight into the into the content here. There's a link to Board Game Gulag if you want to uh, see more information about it. You can scan that on your phone and provide feedback. So there's seven new scenarios. Rocks on the Bridge, La Hacienda de, del Viejo, The Last Wish, The Sun is Going Down, A Ticket to Death, Nowhere to Hide, and A Sunday Afternoon in Silver Spurs. The last scenario is a competitive scenario combining two game maps and allowing to play with 16 characters. So that's a massive little monster game for this. There's extra character sheets for solo and co-op. And some notes for competitive mode as well. So just to give you a quick semi-peek at some of the artwork here. There's rocks on the bridge. There's a lawman. This is a La Hacienda del Viejo. The Last Wish. The Last Wish is for fish. I do like though, I will show this. If you do have to cut them out, if you do want to cut up your book, he did make it where it's pretty far from the margin. So you can just slide in a, uh, he recommends like cardboard, uh, to slide cardboard under this page and then cut. You could also use a, a small cutting mat similar to something like this that you could slide in to protect the other pages and that gives you the ability to cut it if you need to. So he is, he is thoughtful. A lot of times I've seen these and they put stuff on the other side and you're like, what am I doing? It's like cutting coupons out of the newspaper and you can't see everything. So, But that said, this one gets straight into the meat. This has got all the rules. This doesn't have any new rules. This is just the scenarios. Uh, just so you know, the second one comes in, still comes in about 87 pages, right? With the new characters and everything. So there's a lot of, oh, there's some big maps here too. There's the scenarios, the nowhere to, nowhere to hide map. I don't know, this is interesting. He's got the maps here. Let me look at this. You know what he's done? Oh, this is nice. Okay, all right. I'm gonna roll this back a little bit. Well, I'm not gonna roll anything back. I'm just gonna roll back what I said. This one actually has the scenarios from this one, the maps, larger. So kind of what I was saying before about being able to get stuff separately. You don't have to necessarily cut the maps out of this, this one. You can use the, um, this one here. There's extra character standees, but see so you've got larger versions of the maps, right? For using with miniatures. So these have uh, squares that are about an inch and a quarter or so. So that you, if you have some, some, you know, cowboy miniatures that you want to use, you can put those on here and use it. So then you can cut out the back part of this, but I was noticing as I was flipping through that you actually get into Scenario eight, which is from the first book, and it's a larger, just a larger version of the map. So that was very nice of them to add that here in this. And that pads this out. And it looks like they've got, there's four, three, two, and one. In large, in fact, there, it says right there, in large game maps. Select the scenario, carefully cut both pages, fix them together with the tape on the back, after use, fold the whole map with the blank sides at the inside, and this way the tape will not, the tape and the paper will not stretch. 
So the new content, the new scenarios are about 20 pages of the book and the extra large maps and some extra counters are, and standees make up the rest of the 60 pages. So that's pretty neat. So anyway, that's just a quick overview. There's nothing to rebox because nothing got unboxed. But this is the Bite the Bullet You Are a Legend series, volume one, volume two expansion from Frederick Moyerson. It's a game book. You do have to cut it up, but I think you're gonna like it if you're looking for a good Western game because it does have solo, it does have cooperative, and it does have competitive. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.